The latest on Jack Perry and CM Punk's physical altercation backstage at AW All In led to CM Punk reportedly saying he, quote, hates this place. And we have an update on the rumors of suspension for the two stars, with them both possibly missing AW All Out this weekend in Chicago at the United Center. One AW star in Mike Santana says, Who cares about the backstage altercation? Chris Jericho accuses WWE of being petty. Will Ospreay says he's open to all options as his New Japan Pro Wrestling contract is set to expire in the next six months. Tony Khan gives the AEW talent Dynamite off to attend at Wyndham Road Tundra Services and the latest update when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars WWE Championship Bout Saga. Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of All Elite Wrestling. Let's get straight into the latest development when it comes to CM Punk and Jack Perry. The Brawl Out was last year. Now we're talking about Brawl In, I guess. And the latest is that there have been rumors, of course, we covered this yesterday, that both CM Punk and Jack Perry have been suspended following their backstage altercation at All In. But Sean Ross Sapp of Fight for Select has learned a bit more about the altercation in general and the reaction to it from several AEW stars backstage. Now, reportedly, according to Sean Ross Sapp, there was a lot of eye rolling and, quote, this again type responses to the Punk altercation this past past weekend. Punk's side of the story is pretty clear, though Fightful are still getting details about the other side of things. One source said, quote, with 100% certainty, Jack Perry didn't throw the first punch. Punk shoved him and put him in a choke, end quote. Now, depending on who you speak to, accounts have said that Punk shoved, pie-faced, or threw a punch. The situation happened between the end of Perry's match and Punk's opening match of the show, with one account claiming that actually Punk's opponent for the Real World Championship, Samoa Joe, was trying to be a peacemaker and keep others out. Several accounts claim that Punk asked Perry if they had a problem, and Perry said that Punk started something online regarding the real slash fake glass story, and that was his receipt, as reported by PW Torch. Perry had told a couple of people reportedly, and this is key too, that he was planning to make a comment during the match. Now again, very curious and very interesting that part of thing because a report had come out previously that suggested that really anything to happen in the match was going to have to be approved by AEW producers and coaches and it would appear according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select Jack Perry had told a couple of people he was planning to make the comment during his FTW championship match against Hook the big question was whether it was one of those people he told a producer agent or coach and was it actually approved some are suggesting that it was not and again he had planned to do it it was premeditated but it wasn't approved now, as a reminder, obviously, I myself and none of these reporters were present for the skirmish backstage, and we can't really endorse either side as the gospel truth, as is the case with a lot of these things. There are three sides to a story. There's one side, the other side, and the truth that lays somewhere in the middle. Many situations like this are going to be inconsistent depending on which side you hear from, which side of people they're friends with, their perspective on things. It's kind of the case of eyewitness testimony, isn't it? Now, people close to Punk say there wasn't much communication between he and AEW President Tony Khan after the incident. Punk went as far as telling people, quote, he hates this place as a result of the consistent and constant issues in All Elite Wrestling. Again, pretty key quote there. He said he hates this place. Many people within the company say he's plenty responsible, though, for those issues. Neither CM Punk or Jack Perry were at the All In after party and Punk headed out of London Monday afternoon. As Nick Houseman of House of Wrestling reported, both Perry and Punk were told they should leave Wembley at different times to make things easier. Fightful Select, Sean Ross Sapp, can confirm PW Torch's report that the production team was informed of a possible match order switch because of the situation, with the Golden Elite Trios match being considered to be moved up if indeed this altercation caused CM Punk to have to delay or um, change his amount of prep time to get ready for the match. Of course, as we brought to yesterday, there are rumours, it was tweeted by Brian Alvarez, that both Jack Perry and CM Punk are believed to have been suspended. 
Fightful Select and Sean Ross Sapp say they cannot confirm that is the case. Of course, if we get any more confirmation on it, we'll let you know. Now, as far as one of the stories was about CM Punk's difficulty actually traveling to Wembley, reporting that he flew into Heathrow and nobody from AEW was there to meet him at the airport. He called the person that was meant to be his car service. It bounced straight back to him. He had to book a train. He was on the tube. Fans spotted him there and had to give him directions. According to PW Torch, AEW wrestlers who have previously toured internationally with WWE noticed some big differences in how AEW handled the travel. One big difference is wrestlers were not picked up at the airport. That standard not only on WWE international tours, but also New Japan also picks up non-Japan based wrestlers at the airport when they arrive in the country. Wrestlers had to fend for themselves getting rides with Uber. WWE wrestlers on international tours generally travel together in groups, are given an official itinerary, uh, have arranged rides for them to get to the airport, to the hotel or the arena, and also have security assigned to the group. Wrestlers noticed a lot of other differences that added up to a less enjoyable travel experience and added stress and delays in getting rested and ready for the show. CM Punk, obviously, for one, ended up disorientated after he arrived uh, at the airport and had to ask fans for help in actually getting to the stadium, getting to Wembley. House of Wrestling reported this in detail by saying, quote, when Punk landed at Heathrow Airport for AEW All in London on Saturday morning, no one from AEW was there to greet him. There was also no car service to take him to his hotel and when he texted a number he was given by AEW for the driver it bounced back as being an invalid number after waiting for a while punk chose to buy a train ticket and find his own way to his hotel house of wrestling and nick houseman are reporting that they were told the tube was fairly busy at the time kind of part of the course in london to be honest punk got lost and a few fans who noticed cm punk helped him figure out where he was going it appears that punk got into london so close to the actual event because he had taping commitments in atlanta on wednesday wanted to spend Thursday with his wife and dog Larry before heading out on Friday and landing on Saturday morning. Because obviously London is a major modern metropolitan city, wrestlers ended up getting to where they needed eventually and wrestlers who hadn't experienced WWE's smooth travel process weren't thrown off as much as they didn't really have any expectations. As far as one wrestler's reaction to it, Mike Santana has opened up on what he thinks about the situation. He tweeted out the following. You can see it on the screen right there. He said, quote, Who gives a damn about who fought with who? Stop allowing that to drown out the fact that pro wrestling had one of the most amazing days ever. Grow the F up. Now, do you share Mike Santana's sentiments? What are your thoughts on the latest developments when it comes to CM Punk and Jack Perry? If CM Punk reportedly, quote, hates this place, should he leave this place? Or does he hate this place for the right reasons? Let me know your thoughts about it, as well as the possible suspension rumors in the comments section below. Let's talk about Will Ospreay, one of the big performers this past weekend at AEW All-In. Of course, he had his match against Chris Jericho, defeating the Ocho in the center of the ring in their first time ever match. And New Japan IWGP UK champion Will Ospreay has commented on his move, on his wrestling future rather, with lots of fans currently speculating about the star's next move. Ospreay has not kept it secret that his current contract with New Japan is set to expire in early 2024. With Osprey recently making a number of high-profile appearances for AEW, rumors have been swirling about the former IWGP World Heavyweight Champion officially making the jump from New Japan to All Elite Wrestling. Speculation was fueled at All Out London, All In London rather, where Osprey pinned Chris Jericho in singles action to pick up a huge victory. Speaking with Cultaholic ahead of his match, Osprey made it clear that he hasn't ruled anything out yet when it comes to considering his wrestling future. When asked about potentially becoming a free agent, Osprey said, "Quote: I'm." open to all options that's all i can say osprey has been wrestling for new japan since march 2016 when he joined the company's chaos faction after hiroshi tanahashi aj styles and kazuchika okada recommended him to new japan pro wrestling since then osprey has become one of the most decorated stars on the roster winning the iwgp world heavyweight us junior heavyweight and never openweight titles in addition to the 2021 new japan cup tournament and the 2016 and 2019 iterations of the best of the super juniors tournament in AEW, Osprey has wrestled in affiliation with Don Callis and the Don Callis family. What do you think is the future move for Will Osprey? Do you think he stays with New Japan Pro Wrestling? Do you think he jumps over and goes to the United States full time, signs with All Elite Wrestling? Could he go to WWE? What are your thoughts? Let me know your thoughts about it, as always, in the comments section below.
Now, Chris Jericho has accused WWE of pettiness after last night's edition of Monday Night Raw. Chris Jericho has slammed WWE for what some have seen as quite pettiness over a recent tribute to the late Bob Barker, who passed away on August 26, 2023. The veteran game show host was a familiar face on WWE programming, having served as a guest host on Monday Night Raw in 2009. One of the interactions that continues to be well remembered by fans was the famous interaction between Barker and the aforementioned Chris Jericho. Jericho shared the encounter on his own Instagram account along with a tribute to the late star. Highlights of Barker on WWE Raw uh, can be seen during the broadcast, including the omitted Jericho content from the tribute last night. The AW star also revealed that Barker was, quote, the only guy who almost made me break on camera. On the Monday, August 28 episode of Raw, a tribute was played to the late Bob Barker, who passed away at the age of 99. Chris Jericho's encounter was, however, missing from what was shown on the television screens. Responding to a post on X that said, quote, how are they going to show the Bob Barker footage and not show the best part, his confrontation with Chris Jericho? Come on, WWE Raw. Someone else replied, quote, typical WWE pettiness. This caught the attention of Jericho, who replied with a very simple, quote, yup. So do you agree with Jericho? Is this a case of WWE being petty? Was the best moment of Bob Barker's WWE appearance on Monday Night Raw in 2009? His interaction with Jericho, and should WWE have included it in their tribute? Let me know your thoughts about that. Now, of course, the wrestling world is still mourning and still in shock after the sudden and unexpected passing of Wyndham Rotunda, formerly known as Bray Wyatt. Uh, professional wrestlers around the world are performing with heavy hearts as they mourn the unexpected death of Wyndham Rotunda, who performed as Bray Wyatt. Uh, one thing I do want to say before I go into this story is that I have seen the report from TMZ Sports about sort of the circumstances and the nature of Bray Wyatt, Wyndham Rotunda's death. I don't think it's appropriate to go into that or do a video on it or anything like that. All of the information we've put out there regarding Wyndham Rotunda is the stuff that's been put out there by WWE or approved by the family, i.e. Sean Rossap's post that was actually approved by the family. At this time, we don't know if that was approved by the family or anything like that. TMZ had just got um, police reports that they had gained access to. So I don't want to do a video on that unless we firmly know that the family of Wyndham Rotunda is okay with it. So I just wanted to put that out there to you before I carry on with the story. Now, while WWE carried on with its shows over the weekend, some of Rotunda's friends and former WWE colleagues were at AEW's All In pay-per-view at Wembley Stadium in London, England. Many are now planning to pay their final respects after they return to the United States following the record-setting event. And AEW President Tony Khan is reportedly accommodating those who need time off to do so. Fightful Sean Ross Sapp reported Monday night that Khan is granting AEW employees the option to miss Dynamite this week or next week so they can attend memorial services for Rotunda. This week's Dynamite is being held at the Now Arena in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, just outside of Chicago, ahead of Sunday's all-out pay-per-view at the United Center. Many of his friends paid tribute to Rotunda during All In, the House of Black's Buddy Matthews carried a lantern similar to Wyatt's iconic one during the House of Black's entrance. Chris Jericho dedicated his match against Will Ospreay to Rotunda. Meanwhile, FTR's Dax Howard and Cash Wheeler wore armbands reading Bray during their match. And finally, this was a bit of an interesting story actually yesterday when it comes to WWE's licensing agreement with the NFL and the title bouts they've created. Now, the WWE official WWE title bout for Tony Khan's Jacksonville Jaguars has been removed from the lineup of NFL title bout designs. Now, as was reported yesterday, WWE signed a first ever licensing deal with the NFL, revealing a multi-year arrangement to create NFL-inspired WWE legacy title belts. Now, the deal will see designs for all 32 NFL teams featuring their official branding and colors. With the belts, uh, they're now available from NFL Shop, WWE Shop, and Fanatics.com. One design in particular has caught the attention of many pro wrestling fans. There has been a stir online surrounding the addition, then apparent removal of one bout in particular. While an official title for Tony Khan and Shahid Khan's Jacksonville Jaguars team was originally unveiled, eagle-eyed fans noticed that the title had been removed from all the online stores that are stocking the belts. While it was heavily speculated that this happened because of the Jacksonville Jaguars affiliation and ownership with Tony Khan, of course the owner and president of AEW, this was not the case. Fanatics have now taken to Twitter to note that the bout was actually sold out 
bouts, and this is why it's no longer available for pre-orders, indicating that more bouts will be available before the week is out. Fanatics replied to a fan with the following message, Hey there, those sold faster than we could have ever imagined. I would keep your eyes peeled for a restock in the next few days. So suggesting that maybe they just sold out so fast. The question is, who bought them? The Jacksonville Jaguars team is owned by Shahid Khan, the father of AEW president Tony Khan. Tony Khan serves as the team's chief football strategy officer. The listing for the title bout featured the following description before it was taken down. Kickoff just became a whole lot more interesting. It's time to champion your Jacksonville Jaguars fandom with this WWE legacy title bout. Slung over your shoulder or fitted around your waist, it will be easy to channel your inner Stone Cold Steve Austin or John Cena while cheering on the Jacksonville Jaguars. The glory of the NFL and the prestige of the WWE make for one stunning combination. What are your thoughts on this title bout? Who do you think bought them? Did Tony Khan, Shahid Khan buy them all? Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section below. But there you go, guys. It's latest AEW news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe, bottom right-hand corner, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.